Hey guys, this is one of my all-time favorite mines. It's a sprawling Mata mine. It's an old mine from the 1900s. It's a lava vent that we get to crawl through. And last, it's a secret deep base research facility where they were thinking about launching ICBM missiles from underground. Let's watch. So if you don't have the proper equipment and training and experience to go in these mines, it really is a good idea just to stay out. Get together with somebody that knows what they're doing. If you want to go in for the first time, get a little bit of practice and let them show you some of the hazards and things to watch out for. You can learn some really hard lessons in these mines. So as we start moving along, this is a more modern mine, this particular section of it. So you'll see things like uh, some of the steel ore hoppers and loaders. This is coming down from an upper level, of course. And then the next thing we're going to see is the um, air control door. That's a big fan that they have, of course, that they would use to move air in certain areas of the mine. And they, they block it off so that they can control with some precision in the actual airflow. Now this is a, um, a fan that would blow air into specific areas of the mine. Normally they would have some uh, soft hosing that would go into the portion of the mine that they wanted to ventilate. Here I am heading up to a newer level. Dang, Joanne, could you not have gotten a better picture of me? Maybe waited until I smiled at least? Anyhow, folks, I am much happier and much more excited than I look to move up to this next level. It's always fun. It is always, it gives you the energy moving up on these ladders when you're so tired. Once you get up there and you find something new, the adrenaline just rushes out of you and you just want to keep moving. Where water collects in the mine, we often see this green liquid that then forms these beautiful green crystals. I have no idea what, what this is. So if you know, leave some comments down in the, uh, in the comments section. We'd love to know exactly what's going on with that. So we came across this incline. And of course, we had to go straight down just to see what was down there. It's always cool to go down these things because there's fewer people that have visited to the bottom of something like this than at the upper easier to access levels. What was really cool about this mine was all the winches and pulleys and stuff like that that was still left in place. This particular one was driven by compressed air and that was a first for me because I didn't realize that they used a lot of compressed air equipment in these mines. Here is a slusher winch. You can see the chain and cables. What that does is it pulls a real big heavy piece of metal across the ground and just moves the, the ore and the uh, minerals and stuff that is there onto a different level. Here is the other side of it. I'm pretty sure I can get this here running, Joanne. Just give me a second. I'm looking. Uh, I, don't, I don't see a wall plug to plug it in. Well, it's a little before my time anyhow. We'll see what we, what we can do. It looks like a pool timer. Somehow I don't think they had a pool way down in the bottom of this mine. Could be though. This mine has a number of large diameter boreholes that connect the different levels to each other. These boreholes are about five feet in diameter. So we're rigging up a rope. And we're gonna go ahead and drop this one particular borehole that gets us back behind a collapse at a lower level. So, Nobody's been back there for quite a while because it's been collapsed. So we're going to see what we can find back there. Sure enough, we started looking around and we found different things down there. This is, happens to be a uh, break room. Doesn't look like much now, but at one time it would have had, you know, the door and walls and all that. And the miners would have taken their break in there. 
not sure what these are. They might be dynamite warmers or boot warmers. They were electric. They had a grid underneath them. So evidently it was some sort of warming table. So kind of cool stuff. And then as we continued on, we found more winches. Again, this particular winch is an air powered winch. And throughout this mine, there were all kinds of really neat tools left in place. Really enjoyed seeing them because it gives you a feel for what it's like to actually be in the mine at the time that it was being worked. After a long day, it's really nice to go back to camp. Surprisingly enough, the mill is still standing. So we just went inside and set camp up inside. The one time that we were there and it was snowing made it really nice to be in and out of the snow. For dinner, I went ahead and made a uh, chicken pot pie. Really love chicken pot pie when the weather turns a little bit cold. And it was really good. One of these days, I'll have a video on how to make that exact dish. As much as we enjoy spending time underground, we also like to wander around above ground to see what kind of relics and things we can find. We're often uh, rewarded with cool finds, old hardware and, and bits and pieces of equipment and stuff like that. So if you're around some of these old mines or even around some of the ghost towns, walk around away from the main area and see what you can find. You might be surprised. Dang, this thing is huge. How in the world did they get this thing down here? Wow, it's amazing. Seems like a pretty good idea to me, not to smoke within 25 feet of explosive storage. Wonder who came up with that bright idea. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean we're gonna go down this also? Yeah, we are. You are crazy. I say we do rock, paper, scissors. Let's flip a coin. You always lose up the coin, but sure, let's do it. Oh man, you lose, girl. I always lose. Have a nice ride. We're going down the chute. <laughs> As we were exploring this mine, we started coming across something that looked like scientific equipment set into the walls. There were boreholes in these pipes and tubes and wires were set into the wall for some kind of monitoring. Now we've come across civil defense supplies before, like barrels of water and crackers and foodstuffs and things like that, but never anything quite like this. And as we inspected and wandered around, we came across a small office that had a sign on it that said ICBM deep basing. Now you may want to look that up online because there's a whole topic around putting these missiles in places that they were unexpected and potentially destruction proof from incoming ICBMs. We also found some documents and so the whole thing was quite interesting. It's something we've not seen anywhere else in any of our explorations. So Kelly's roped up getting ready to head down below and see what she can find. We came across the miners break room and this one was kind of interesting because it was a little more intact. And in the desk was a whole bunch of uh, blasting caps. That's one reason that you really need to be careful when you're exploring these mines because you just don't know what you'll find. And, of course, you have a telephone. So, I mean, I guess you could order pizza right, right down to your mine. And now, a word from our sponsor. Hey, guys. We're having a great time here. If you're liking it, what I'd like you to do, click the like button. That tells YouTube you like what we're doing. And if you're having a good time, want to see more of it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That helps me grow the channel and get more of these adventure videos out here so we can have more fun, go more places, see more things. Glad to have you along. Thanks a lot. A mine this size would naturally have work areas to maintain and work on the equipment that gets broken. Kelly's checking out the workbench. They would have an inventory of parts so they didn't have to run to the surface to get different equipment or parts or fixtures and stuff they needed. It's really interesting to see this kind of area still intact in a mine like this. Any idea what this is? Yep, sure enough, it's the outhouse. One thing I find really interesting about this area is right in the middle of this new modern mine complex, is an old mine that dates back to the early 1900s. And of course, we had to go explore it. We'd explored a larger upper stope, and 
And at the end of that stope was an opening that led to the lower level. This required us to rig up a rope. Then Lee headed down and Tony headed down, followed by the rest of us. In this part of the mine, it's pretty much like you'd expect to see in any of the old mines. Lots of ore chutes. What was surprising was how much of the green crystals were just everywhere. Really interesting to see. They're beautiful. It's just too bad we couldn't have taken a few of them home and made them stay. It'd be fun to show them to all our friends. As we were getting ready to exit this old part of the mine, Tony looked up on one of the walls and saw a small fissure. So of course he had to go up and explore it. It turns out it's a volcanic vent. As you might expect, the walls were dark and there were these sheets, almost like small curtains of volcanic material that were hanging from the walls. I'd never seen anything like it. There had been some pretty heavy thunderstorms while we were up exploring the mine. And as we were leaving, we noticed that the road had been closed off and they were routing us off the road and into the dirt. Then we realized why. Luckily, no one ended up having the road collapse under them, but it could have been really deadly. Here's some more videos for you. And if you like what we're doing, click the subscribe button. See you next video.